Climate is actually just a proxy for a much larger challenge, and that is that we realize our resources are limited. And so the SDGs can be seen as a vision, a vision for how we want to share those resources among all the people on this planet, but also all the other living organisms. Universities are inspired by problems. Our scientists do their research to make a difference in the world. So when they see a problem where their research, their science can be part of a solution, they immediately jump on it. Students are a tremendous resource in terms of actually thinking about solutions to world problems. And they come with what everybody comes with in this society, diversity, different kinds of perspectives, a fresh mindset that actually forces us to think collectively and critically reassess what we know about the solutions. The University of Copenhagen, like so many other universities, is organized in terms of faculties and institutes. We needed some sort of a mechanism to be able to bring together research and teaching from these different uh, academic departments that is relevant to, to meeting the challenges that are identified in the SDGs. Every course we offer from the University of Copenhagen, you can actually, as a student, find out which SDG does it contribute to. Also, we encourage and, and have set up possibilities to work across disciplines because we strongly believe that complex problems need multidisciplinary solutions. So getting the students to work together across uh, study lines, uh, across disciplines, is crucially important. Part of the key to getting anyone involved in these issues, including students, is ownership. I'm running a course um, on existential risks and law, for instance, where we confront the students with the 10 biggest problems in the world we have right now, and then ask them throughout the course to try and develop legal solutions to one of these. At the end of the course, we develop a five-page policy brief that we sent to the ministry responsible for this particular problem. So the solution is not only something we create in this kind of uh, learning space, but also something which finds an anchor in the world. As individuals, uh, we can get frustrated alone and we can, get, we can feel the, the burden ourselves. But when we get together in a community, we can think we can push the, the agenda from the politicians. We want to think uh, climate politics into everything. The University of Copenhagen pretty much does research in all areas of science, from, from natural sciences to, to humanities. And as an example, I can mention that since 1955, we have investigated the ice cap of Greenland, initially just to understand it, how deep it was. And we found out that it could also be used to describe how climate had changed over the last uh, many centuries. And now we use it specifically to measure the effects of climate change on the ice cap because we have these long time series of studies. My program is focused a lot around sustainability. It's um, on a very interdisciplinary level. So it's both natural sciences and social sciences. There's a lot about agriculture, but also people doing agriculture. So we need to go abroad to developing countries to study how um, agriculture is done sustainably, and it's both for the environment and for people. Denmark is a relatively small country, densely populated, with an enormous population of animals which we produce for food. But because we live on such little land, we also have to, and are historically very conscious about protecting our environment. So we have always done research, both in how can we incentivize production, uh, improve quality of life, but at the same time also protect and preserve our environments and make sure that the quality of life for the next generation is always better than the quality of life for the current generation. We can't point at any institute or, or faculty at this university that doesn't have research going on at the moment which is relevant to the, to the SDGs. In our economics department, we're, we're developing new green economy tools in the university when we're studying biodiversity. We also have an awful lot of research going on in terms of, of farming and food production. 
The program that I'm in has a focus on the environment and natural resource management in a developing country context. We have been challenging uh, the way to think about sustainability and we also have an integrated uh, field work um, in our course where we are going to uh, go and have a look at ways that um, natural resources are being managed in, uh, in different locations around the world and uh, do some projects about that. What we see at the moment is that we have lost about half of our tropical forests on a global level and about two thirds of what is left has been degraded. We are in the middle of what scientists call the sixth mass extinction. We are losing species at a very rapid pace. The question is, what are we going to do about it? It's our forest too, empowers local communities to document uh, illegal logging and protect their forests. So together we have developed an app for smartphones uh, with which the local communities can do document both forest resources and forest crimes. It's Our Forest too is to a large extent powered by students. It's the students that have the wildest ideas and the energy to drive innovation forward. Universities are by nature international, so our researchers work together in big international networks and share their knowledge and share inspiration. We like particularly to see students coming to Copenhagen from all over the world and take inspiration not only from the, from the university, uh, but also from the environment that they become a part of. I think in general, sort of the, the fundamental thing that I've learned is how we need to sort of reduce our consumption as a whole as a society. And that's kind of a mix of both some technological solutions and then also some more sort of uh, social and societal, like how we behave in, in society in general. I think educating the next generation is our most important role as a university. But on top of that, we also do research, which means we generate new knowledge. So understanding how environments, how our climate, how uh, the planet Earth is changing because of human activity. It's very easy to get pessimistic about the future, but then you see the research that people are doing, you see the amount of people that are actually working on issues related to, to climate change and sustainability in general. And it's a little bit easier to get optimistic on that. And I think it's also important to try and get into a more optimistic mindset because then you're probably also going to be more proactive about actually doing something about the issues. The only way to deal with this is to keep tapping at the problem. These issues are so incredibly complex and so built into our societal structures that we have to deal with it brick by brick. After all, it's those who are crazy enough to believe they can change the world who will eventually do so.